to even begin. Um, it, it's interesting. I almost, I almost don't even know what it looks like, but I can. I do believe this. I think to even begin, um, cultures, nations, all folk have to at least acknowledge, um, you know, uh, the history. They acknowledge um, the oppression of certain peoples of the world. So if I can't even name that this or that has happened. So let, let's, let's talk United States, or let's just talk North America. Um, it, it is clear that sometimes when you lift up chattel slavery in this land, when you say the word slavery, you know, there's the wincing in people, and sometimes there's the rolling of the eyes, sometimes there's just a sense of, can we, you know, snap out of it? Can we get past it? Here we are. And, but the bottom line is, you know, um, I think that we are living in the aftermath of slavery. So I'm not trying to run, you know, do this whole thing on slavery, but that, that's the example that I have and that it's hard for people to even, you know, kind of grapple with. Guess what? It's not something that's easy to forget about because it is a part of our history. You know, um, and I think to you know, racial justice begins with us acknowledging. Can we acknowledge our reality? You know, and it's not, it's not even about throwing people, anybody back into this sense of, you know, um, I think that we all have to deal with the responsibility and accountability, but it's not about, you know, making folks suffer again. Um, but if you're not willing to even name that this is there and that some people still struggle because of it, well, you know, you know racial justice, come on. Um, I was thinking about, um, is it Truth and Reconciliation Commission, South Africa, um, I didn't even know this, but I was hearing that, you know, in Central, uh, South and Central America, that even some of those truth and uh, reconciliation commissions were even more effective than the ones in South Africa. So first of all, we're talking about, you know, um, the powers, um, taking responsibility, the willingness to, to hear what nobody wants to hear. I think it just goes there. Now, I, I'm not, a, I don't think that I have the kind of, intellectual prowess to even talk about, you know, what would the racial justice look like, you know, uh, I mean, can't we just name that there is, yeah. you know, um, that's where I am. So not even, you know, it's, you know, because anybody can look around and say, well, people are prospering, people are, you know, but, um, you know, everybody does not have access to everything. And so, you know, we can, we can just talk about Native people, so we can, you know, and a lot of people don't want to hear it because, you know, there is a sense of, look, I'm trying to just get, you know, trying to make my way in life. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, and so throwing the, you know, putting, um, throwing this big kind of um, the onus on me because this happened in our history. You know, it's not even about the onus. It's about, you know, first of all, you know, we're not even living in truth if we can't name the truth. You know, this, this happened. Uh, this hurt not just those folk or those folk. This hurt all of us. You know, because, um, well, this is, this might be a, folk don't always agree with me when I say this, but I think um, it's interesting to oppress others, um, to enslave others, um, you know, everybody's enslaved at some level, because the thing is, you know, your whole existence um, is determined by keeping someone else in bondage or keeping others down, and so, you know, you're not even free to live your own life, because you have to be focused on, right, uh, trying to kind of snuff out the, um, the freedoms, if you will, of others.